Okay, now the hard disk is installed and connected to the disk controller and we're ready to move on to the monitor card. The monitor card controls a monochrome monitor and one parallel printer. The top connector is the monitor connector and the bottom connector is the parallel printer connector. This card installs in the chassis in the same way that the disk controller card did. Once the expansion cards are in place, we will use the metal expansion slot covers to cover up any unused expansion card slots. At this point, the basic assembly of our computer is complete. Only the cover is missing. But for the moment, let's leave the cover off and look at the back of the computer. First, we will connect the monitor to the monitor card. Next, plug in the keyboard. Then plug the monitor power cable into the power supply. And finally, plug the system power cord into the power supply at one end and a grounded wall outlet at the other. Our computer is now ready to test. First, we switch on the monitor. Next, we insert a floppy diskette containing DOS, which means Disk Operating System, in floppy disk drive A and close the latch. Apply power to the computer by turning on the switch at the outside edge of the power supply. The computer will go through a cycle of internal self-testing. The first time we power up the system, a message will be displayed indicating that we have invalid configuration information and will be told to run the setup program. The reason we are getting this message is that there is a chip on the motherboard known as the CMOS chip which has information about the system stored and maintained by the battery. This information consists of the number and types of disk drives installed, how much and what kind of RAM is installed, what type of monitor is connected, the current date and time, and more. Since we have just assembled our system, the CMOS chip must be programmed to recognize our particular configuration. The message tells us that to run the setup program, we should press the F2 key. The next message tells us to press any key to continue. Now the screen displays the default configuration stored in the CMOS chip. The first bit of information shown at the top of the display is the time of day. The hour field is highlighted. If the hour isn't correct, use the right or left arrow keys to increment or decrement the hour until it reaches the proper value. Once the hour is properly set, press the down arrow key to save it and move to the minutes field. The minutes and seconds fields can be set by using the arrow keys the same as in setting the hour field. When we have finished setting the time, we press the down arrow key to move to the date field. The month will be highlighted. Select the correct month, date, and year using the right or left arrow keys as we did for the time. Once the date is correct, press the down arrow key to save the date and advance to the diskette A field. There are five possible choices for this field. Five and a quarter inch 360 kilobyte, five and a quarter inch 1.2 megabyte, three and a half inch 720 kilobyte, three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte, or not installed. Use the right and left arrow keys to make the proper choice and then press the down arrow key to save your choice and advance to the diskette B field. The same five choices are available for the diskette B field. Once you have made your choice, press the down arrow key to save it and move to the hard disk 1 field. Hard disks are grouped into types. In order to determine which type of hard disk you have, you will need to know some rather technical information concerning your particular hard disk drive. Don't be concerned if you don't fully understand these terms. You will need to know how many cylinders and how many read-write has it has, where to begin write pre-compensation, and the location of the landing zone. This information can be obtained in several ways. The best way to get it is from the dealer when you purchase the drive. 
but the information may also be contained in the manufacturer's quality control report that was shipped with the hard drive, on the, la on the identification label on the hard drive, or in the documentation provided with the drive. If the information is not available from any of those sources, you can always call the manufacturer of the drive. The information about our drive was found in the documentation and in the quality control report provided with the drive. It has 820 cylinders, six read write heads, write precompensation is not applicable to this drive, and the landing zone or park cylinder is 820. Once you have this information about your hard disk drive, Scroll through the hard disk drive types using the right and left arrow keys until one that matches the characteristics of your drive appears in the window. Press the down arrow key to save this information and highlight the hard disk 2 field. Select the drive type for the second hard disk in exactly the same manner as for the first hard disk. We don't have a second hard disk so we will select not installed and press the down arrow key to move to the next field. The next field is the base memory field. Type the correct amount of RAM installed on your system if the correct amount number is not already displayed. You can't use the right and left arrow keys to set the value for this field. You must type it in. If you have one megabyte of RAM or more installed on your system, you would enter 640 KB here and press the down arrow key to move to the extended memory field. Type the amount of RAM memory above 640K that is installed on your system, in our case 384K. Press the down arrow key to select the display field where we will select the type of display monitor we have installed on our system, in this case mono for the monochrome monitor. Next press the down arrow key to move to the keyboard field. Here we will ensure that the installed setting is selected and press the down arrow key to advance to the CPU speed field. In the CPU speed field, we will select the speed at which we want the system to always start up. We will select the fast option so that every time we start the computer, it will be operating at its fastest speed. If we need to slow it down for some reason, we can always use a keyboard combination to toggle between the fast and slow speeds. The key combination is usually Control alt minus to toggle to the slower speed and Control alt plus to return to the fast speed. But this key combination may vary from machine to machine. Consult the documentation that came with your motherboard. The final entry on the setup screen is the coprocessor field. You can't highlight or change this field. It simply tells you whether there is a math coprocessor installed or not. The information we have entered here is recorded in the CMOS chip, but does not take effect until the computer is rebooted. At the bottom of the display we are given a few options, one of which is to press the escape key to reboot the system. Let's do that. After a moment of self-testing, the light on the A drive goes on as the computer reads information from the diskette and boots the system. Next you will be asked for the date and time. These should be correct, so just press the Enter key. Once you've responded to the date and time inquiries, the computer is ready for use. Now that we know everything is in working order, we can install the cover. To install the cover, we slide it over the front of the chassis. Be careful not to snag any cables on the mounting screw brackets as we slide the cover back. Push it all the way onto the chassis and fasten with five screws at the back of the case. The last thing that needs to be accomplished is to prepare the hard disk drive for use. Follow the directions provided with your hard disk drive to accomplish this task. Well, that wasn't so difficult, was it? You now have a computer which will provide you many hours of use in the months and years ahead. Good luck with your computer, goodbye, and thank you.